welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, my podcast about knitting and cross stitch. Today is October 8th, 2019 and I'm coming to you on a very, very cold day, which is ironic because I'm sitting in here like usual dying under my lights. Um, so I guess we'll have to talk about what I'm wearing today first so that I can take it off and I stop melting. <laughs> but anyways, before we get started, a couple of little things I want to let you know. First is just where you can find me on the internet. I am on Instagram at birch.and.lily and I am on Ravelry as Birch and Lily. And I just wanted to also say thank you to all of my returning viewers and thank you if you're coming and checking me out for the first time. I hope you enjoy. So let's jump right into what I'm wearing right now. This is my finished Bronte sister shawl. Uh, this is a pattern that I was test knitting for Lindsay Fowler of Lost and Fawn. It is going to be releasing very soon. I believe the release date is October 18th. Um, but yeah, I knit this shawl out of three different colorways from Mulberry Fiber Co. I believe they were all club colorways. Don't quote me on it though. Um, so the lightest one here, this beautiful one is called Hugo. This is on her 100% merino base called Berry Merino. The medium tone here, the pink, is called Granny's Blanket, and this is on her 80-10-10 base. So 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. And then the deepest color here is called Broken Pottery, and this is also on her 80-10-10 base. So I might as well jump right up, do some shuffling with my mic and stuff, and give you guys a better peek at my finished shawl. So I'll show you guys first with it still on here. So this is my shawl. I don't think I can get far enough back for you to see my face. Oh, actually you kind of can if I scrunch a little bit. Um, so this is my finished shawl. This is the first time I've actually made tassels. And to be honest, I think I'm going to take them out and weave them back in or possibly tack the ends, like the corners of the shawl down to them. Because since the last time I've put them on, They've definitely fallen a whole bunch, and I don't know if that's just because of the weight of them or I didn't weave them in well enough, I don't know. Um, if you have a solution to that, I would definitely appreciate it because I don't like that space in between the end of the shawl and the tassel. I want it to be like right up against there. So yeah, let me know if you have any solutions for that but this is what it looks on like on super snuggly super cozy super cute so let me shuffle around my mic and get the shawl off so i can show it to you held spread open okay that was a huge relief to get off i was very warm and i only had it on for like five minutes but so here we go here it is held out in all its glory. It's really big, really cozy. Got this beautiful, beautiful lace in the top two sections, the Hugo section and the Granny's Blanket section. Um, Lindsay calls it a gothic lace pattern. And then a simpler eyelet lace in the Broken Pottery section, surrounded by two two by two rib sections comes into a perfect triangle and it is worked top down so you start up here in this section and work down I'll give you a closer look here at the gothic lace it just opened up so beautifully once I blocked the shawl and then here is the eyelet and ribbed section So there is an I-cord running across the top. There is not one when you bind off on the sides here. And yeah, my tassels. But you can kind of see now that I'm closer, I just don't like that. It wasn't like that when I attached them. And like looking, I just can't see how it would have slipped that much. So if you know a way to fix that, please let me know. So yeah. So happy with this. Just beautiful. It works up so pretty 
with the 100% superwash merino is not itchy. Um, I find sometimes it can be for me, but this base is not itchy at all. And of course the cashmere bases are super cozy and super snuggly. And this actually matches my lipstick. Did not plan that. <laughs> um, yeah, Lindsay is an incredible designer. This pattern is written so well. It's so easy to follow. I knit it up very fast. Like I had this done in a month, less than a month. Granted, I did put a lot of work into it just because the testing deadline was a little tight, but that is not Lindsay's fault. So yeah, definitely recommend grabbing this pattern when it releases. If you have any other questions about it, please let me know. Um, I did knit this on the called for needle size, which was a 3.5 millimeter US 4 needle. Um, I'm not sure what the other testers knit it on, but I met Gage quite easily. Yeah, like I said, first time making tassels, first time attaching, I think. That's my first time doing a triangle shawl without brioche too. The only triangle shawls I've done before I've had brioche. So I guess it was a little bit different for me. I was able to figure out and kind of learn the construction a little bit quicker just because I wasn't paying so much attention to working brioche at the same time. So yeah, grab that pattern when it comes out and I would love to see your finished objects. I am going to make sure that I take that beauty out after I record today and get some really good finished object photos of it to post on my Instagram account. Okay, I have so many finished objects today. That was not my only one. I hit a finishing kick, I guess is the best way to put it. I don't know, the past week and a half, two weeks, I have just really had the urge to clear off all my needles so that I could start some new things. I felt like I was working on the projects that I have been working on for a long time and I wasn't making any progress because I kept jumping back and forth between them. I didn't really give one specific project the love that it needed. So I, yeah, big stack, very excited. So. Let's jump right in. The first uh, finished pair of socks that I'm going to show you guys are my Irving socks. These socks, I swear, have been on like three or four episodes, which is not normal for me with socks. Um, so I will show these to you on the blockers, just so it's a little bit easier to see. So give me a second to pop those on. Here we go. So these beautiful socks are knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones. I cast on 60 stitches for these socks and did a one by one twisted rib. I follow the pattern pretty much exactly minus the twisted rib. The pattern calls for just a one by one rib, but I find my one by one ribbing is quite loose, so I switch that to a twisted rib. And then the other thing that's different in the pattern, I believe it calls for just a short row heel, um, but I substituted in a slip stitch heel flap and gusset with a little garter panel running down each side. I will say usually I don't cast on 60 stitches for socks but the pattern called for 60. I guess I could have removed some stitches from the back and then readjusted when I put in the heel. No that wouldn't have worked. Never mind. I could not have done that. Um, so yeah I cast on the size medium, I thought the small would be too small. Now I'm wondering if maybe I could have got away with the size small, because um, looking at them on the blockers now, they are definitely a little loose, but that's okay. I usually just wear my hand knit socks as cozy around the so house like slipper socks, so I'm not too worried. I'll just make sure these ones I wear when I know I'm going to be sitting on the couch a lot. <laughs> Uh, so I guess the yarn I used is one of my Woolberry Fiber Co. Gilmore Girls Club sock sets. This one is in Vicious Trollop. This was from August of 2018. Absolutely beautiful, pale pink with speckles of greens and mauves and this beautiful fuchsia-y, magenta-y contrast color. I will flip one sock around for you on the blocker so that you can see the pattern that runs across the front and the back a little bit easier. 
Here we go. That's not the greatest, is it? I should have looked before I slipped it all the way. There we go. So it's got this beautiful cable running down each side with this feather and fan type pattern down the middle. Very easy to memorize. I have this pattern memorized. I had it memorized probably two to three repeats in and I didn't have to look at the page anymore. And then the back just has a nice pearl ridge texture on it. So yeah, my Irving socks are done. They are going into my box of socks for the year. Okay, the next pair of socks I have finished are my Desert Vista Dye Works socks for the month of September. I'm still on track to get the whole year finished, so that's pretty exciting. So here they are. These are knit out of the Big Magic colorway from Desert Vista Dye Works. I cast on 60 stitches for these socks on 2.25 millimeter US1 needles. I did a two by two rib with a afterthought heel. I always have it linked down below. I use the tutorial from Kirby Werby here on YouTube. And then I just do a typical wedge toe. Um, for all of my vanilla socks, I do cast on 60 stitches. I find they just fit a little bit better. When they're just plain stockinette, they are a little bit looser than, than um, something that would be patterned. So I find the 60 stitches just keeps the socks nice and snug. So yeah, there really isn't much to say about a vanilla sock. Like, it's straightforward. The yarn's very pretty. Like I said, this is big magic. Beautiful, beautiful colors. I love my bright self-striping socks. And yeah, I do have um, October's pair. It is cast on and I will show you guys that later on in the episode in the works in progress section. Okay, the next two finished pairs of socks that I have are both new designs that I have in testing right now. Um, actually, the one is not in testing just yet. There is one, I guess today is the last day to apply. So this should be uploaded by this afternoon, late this afternoon on October 8th, <laughs> on October 8th. Um, so I am accepting testers for one more day. If you want to find the link for that pair, I'll tell you when I talk about those socks. But first we will jump into my Birch Path socks. Finally have a name. <laughs> Um, these socks are named after the beautiful Birch Path from Anne of Green Gables. So yeah, these socks are being tested right now. The ladies that are testing for me are doing a fantastic job. One is already finished, which is insane because I think they just got the pattern on Friday. So crazy. Um, but yeah, I'm very proud of these and very excited to get the pattern into you guys' hands. It should be releasing at the beginning of November. Um, so yeah, <laughs> these are knit out of Woolberry Fiber Co. on her BFL sock base in the colorway Homemade Jam. So these are the Birch Path socks. I think I'll just hold up one just because the colorway is a little bit darker. So hopefully you can see it better. So these are 64 stitches on 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones. They have a modified two by two rib there is a little bit of a change to it just so it matches up with the pattern. And they have this beautiful lace cable running down both sides of the sock and this beautiful, beautiful textured chevroni type pattern on the back. So the lace just really reminded me of birch leaves, beautiful leaves on trees. And the chevron reminded me of like a gravel path that they would have worked worked on that they would have walked on <laughs> on the birch path so yeah this um chevron does run down into the heel flap and it's pretty <laughs> i don't know um definitely check out instagram hashtag birch path socks to see what my testers are working on and see it in some different colorways as well um Flipping on the sock blocker did not work very well last time, so I'll just hold this up for you guys. See the lace a little bit better. So it's just got a stockinette panel down the middle. It looks beautiful when it's on your leg. And then there is the chevron. So yeah, keep an eye out for that pattern. I will let you guys know when it releases. I should have 
at least one, maybe two more episodes of the podcast out by the time it's ready to release. I will keep you guys updated as well. Um, yeah, Birch Path socks coming soon. And the final pair of socks that I have completed are another pattern of mine. These I knit up in collaboration with Sugar Plum Circus Yarn. She sent me her Keep Off the Dirigible Plums sock set uh, to knit up a pattern for her in to release at the yarn show that she will be at on November 10th. So these will be releasing November 10th. Um, like I said, I'm still accepting applications for testers until the end of the day today, Eastern time. Um, I will make sure this is what I'll do. My Instagram is linked down below the video. If you click there and then click into the links in my description on Instagram, the link to apply will be there. Um, if it is past today, past um, October 8th, applications will be closed. I apologize if you're watching this a little late and you wanted to test. Um, but I do have a deadline to get them out, so I have to have a deadline for testing applications. But here they go. Here they go. Here they are. Um, these are my dirigible plums sock pattern. These were inspired by some pictures that I found on the internet of dirigible plum trees. Um, yeah. I'm really bad at describing stuff today. Um, these are knit on 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones. They have the same sort of thing as the previous pattern, a one by one rib that, or not one by one, two by two rib that is uh, modified slightly to fit with the pattern. Um, and they also have this gorgeous striping on the toe and the cuff in the contrast color, as well as that uh, slip stitch heel with the garter edge that I was talking about. I know a couple of you were definitely interested in me releasing a pattern that had that in it. So I have done that just for you guys. So if you were interested in learning how to do the slip stitch heel flap and gusset with the garter um, ridges, garter panels on the side of it, keep an eye out for this pattern releasing on the 10th. I will pull one of these off the blocker for you as well to give you a peek of the pattern. So it has this beautiful cable running down the middle with lace on the side that looks like pretty little leaves, little leaves on the plum tree. I don't know if that helps at all. I don't think so. It seems kind of dark in here today, which is interesting because my lights are going, but hopefully you were able to see that. Um, very pleased with this pattern, very excited to be collaborating with Jensen of Sugar Plum Circus again. She has beautiful yarn. This is on her 8020 base, her sock base, um, and I am sure she will have sock sets available at the yarn show. I do know she has the um, main color here, uh, Keep Off the Dirigible Plums, available on her website right now already if you are interested in grabbing a skein. I don't believe it comes with the contrasting mini though, just the main color by itself. So final of my socks. I can't believe that I finished four pairs of socks in the past two weeks. Pretty exciting. And then I have them all blocked minus the Desert Vista Dye Works ones because let's be honest I've been lazy all year and I don't weave in the ends and I don't block them. They're all sitting in a bag. I'll hit a day where I feel like weaving in the ends and I'll do them all at once. I don't know if I'll block them though. I'll probably just block them by wearing them. They're not something that has a pattern that needs to be like lace work that needs to be opened up or anything like that. So not too concerned. Okay, so because I finished so much stuff, I started a lot of new stuff. Minus one thing. So I guess we'll start with the thing that is a previous work in progress that you guys have seen before. It's another pair of socks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, I have a shawl, a new shawl I cast on to show you guys, so it's not all socks. Okay, so these socks are in my bag by Knit Two Together Studios, Sue Triber. She will always be linked down below in the description on where to find her. And these socks are the Cozy Autumn Socks by This Handmade Life. I am knitting them out of a club colorway from Maker's Haven Yarn. I haven't said the name for a while, so I might as well say it this time. It's very long. Um, she dyed this yarn up based off of a quote off of the show Dawson Creek. 
Uh, so the quote is, the simple act of being in love with you is enough for me, so you're off the hook. Super cute, beautiful yarn. Um, I love her, I don't know, what are they called? Little sock sets? There are, there are sock sets that um, only come with 50 grams of the main color, and that's all I need half the time. So this here is the main color, the lighter one, and the contrast is this beautiful baby blue. Um, I have modified these socks slightly. I'll pop the finished one on a blocker quickly. The pattern itself calls for a, is it a two by two rib, one by one rib, something like that, calls for a rib. And it also calls for just a typical slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I have replaced the heel flap with the heel flap and gusset with the garter panel. And the cuff here is a Pico cuff. I found the instructions for the Pico cuff in the Sweet Sadie socks pattern. Um, so super cute. Sorry, there's a string in the way super cute um, definitely has tons of stretch so not worried about the fit at all and then this toe is the toe that is called for in the pattern the cozy autumn socks pattern <laughs> uh, so really really beautiful as you can see from here it's just this mock lace pattern nothing on the duh nothing on the sole of the foot you'd feel it I don't know what I'm saying, um, but the pattern runs around the whole leg and then obviously you end the pattern on the bottom of the foot when you turn the heel. So first sock is finished, second sock is quite a bit underway. Like I said, I am in a needle clearing mode, so these have been getting a lot of love lately and I'm happy about that because I just want to start some new things. So. Last time I was where the progress keeper is, I just had the cuff cast on. Uh, so now I have done the leg, heel flap and gusset, and started working through the foot. I think I have about two or three more repeats left on the foot of this sock. Uh, I cast on 60 stitches for this sock. I believe the only two sizes it came in were 60 and 72. Uh, this is a free pattern, so if you want to knit it, it's free on Ravelry. Wow. If you want to knit it, it's free on Ravelry, so definitely check that out. Um, and I use my typical 2.25 millimeter needles, US ones, for this. Yeah, really enjoying it. They will be done next time, I promise, with lots of other new socks and things that I'm working on. We'll see. I got a puppy. Um, if you don't follow me, on Instagram, you would not know that I got a puppy and she takes a lot of time. She's very energetic. So I knit while she sleeps and I play when she's not sleeping. So it's definitely cut a little bit into my crafting time, but that's okay. So yeah, cozy autumn socks and I'll show you a shawl. So this shawl is a pattern by Kohi Locatelli. It is the Storm Shawl, and it is in a bag from the Striped Tangerine, which is smushed. <laughs> I got this last year at the Arbor Fiber Expo, which is actually this weekend, and I'm very excited to go to with a friend of mine. Um, but it's this beautiful Star Wars fabric. And the yarn that I'm using for this project is from a homespun house. It is the, can't remember there a sec, it's the elderberry colorway. So this shawl is actually a one skein shawl, which is awesome. Um, helps me use up some of those random skeins that I have lying around that I haven't used in a long time. And I'm not sure when I'll use them. <laughs> um, so I cast on the shawl with the Cal4 needle, a 4.5 millimeter US 1 needle, and it has drop stitches. I've never done drop stitches before. Um, I did have a little bit of issues with tension, and I had to do some finagling to get all the stitches to 
work properly. But we're good now, and I know better for the next time I repeat it in the pattern. Uh, but this is what I have going so far. That progress keeper means nothing. I just have it there to remember the front of the project. I will move it up though when the podcast is done so we know where I was for next episode. Um, but yeah, drop stitches. This is just simple garter stitch. And I believe it does wet, have like a wedge section coming next with some short rows. So enjoying that. It's a very easy to remember simple knit. Um, it's been great for when we're sitting and watching TV and yeah, that's about all I have to say about it. I haven't got tons done. Um, I think I've definitely lost my sweater knitting mojo a little bit and now I've moved on to shawls. Now that I've finished the Bronte sister shawl, I just want to work on shawls right now, which is fine. It's okay. Winter's coming up. They're still warm, so they'll still be useful to me. <laughs> And we have one more pair of socks to show you. These are just my Desert Vista Dye Work socks for the month of October, so I'll fly through them pretty quickly. Nothing super special. Okay, now I have the right bag. Uh, this project is in a bag from Yarn Candy Studio. I'm using the Neon Cotton Candy colorway. These are not self-striping. Um, I thought I would switch it up. This is a variegated colorway from Desert Vista Dye Works. It's still on her 75-25 Viso base, um, which is my favorite from her. I still prefer an 80-20 over a 75-25, but this is wonderful. Perfect for car knitting, movie knitting. Um, so this sock was my movie knitting for Friday night. which explains why it's all tangled. Um, so yeah, I had the cuff completed. I completed the cuff before the movie, and then I just knit stocking up the whole movie, and that is where I got. So it's kind of micro-striping, kind of pooling. It's doing all sorts of things. It's pretty, though. I'm very excited to have another pair of cozy socks to wear. Um... So yeah, we went and saw the Joker. It's kind of creepy, but it was good. I usually just like going for the popcorn, so I didn't complain too much. Um, cast on 60 stitches on 2.25 millimeter needles with a 2x2 two two rib. Those are my Desert Vista Dye Work socks. So yeah, get those done by the end of October. And then I just have two more pairs of Desert Vista Dye Work socks for the year, and I've completed all 12, which is pretty exciting. I'm proud of myself for making it this far. Cross stitch. If you guys were here for the knitting portion of the podcast, that is all I have for knitting. Um, it's definitely going to be a little bit longer of an episode than I'm used to, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, knitting is done. Thank you for watching that. If that is all you are here for. If you're here to see cross stitch as well, let's get started. So these are all in pretty southern bags. I won't say that the whole time. Um, yeah, I love them. They're great. They hold my projects. Yay. <laughs> uh, so the first project that I will show you guys is my Halloween squirrel. This is a pattern by the Blue Flower, and I am using all of the call for colors and the call for linen on this pattern. It is on. It is on a 40 count. So I am stitching it one over two. And I have loose threads everywhere, like usual. So that is how far I've gotten. This little squirrel is almost done. It's just missing one tiny color in her eye. And then she is complete. And then she is holding a basket, but I wouldn't count that as part of the squirrel. Um, yeah love it i love stitching oopsies i love stitching on the 40 count it's just beautiful and that is in this halloween bag the next project that i'm working on should have been done for the beginning of this month but it is not um and i'm not kicking myself for it work on what makes me happy like i said i have a little bit more limited time now so i'm a little bit more choosy of what i'm working on so this is in this floral bag <laughs> And I did mention this last episode, but I will say it again. 
I do know that I centered this really poorly on the fabric. It's okay, I checked and it will fit just fine on what I mounted on, so I'm not too worried. I have enough fabric. I have just enough fabric. Um, yeah, I don't know what I was doing when I put this on here, but it'll be fine. So here is my October Little House Needleworks cross stitch. I'll try and hold it so it doesn't look crooked. <laughs> um, so I'm getting close to being done. I just have the bird that I'm working on on top of the fence and the words and I think then just the leaves around the border. I am stitching this on 32 count raw natural linen in all of the called for classic Colorworks colors. Yeah. And finally, this is another small start um, in another floral bag. This is the pattern Let It Snow Bungalow from Hands On Design. And I am stitching up the whole series of these. I want to be able to switch them out in my house for the seasons. As usual, another thread hanging. So I don't have tons done. I have just started on the snowman's hat. I'm now working on the little bit of a texture pattern inside of the hat. As you can see, pom-pom is pretty much done. Always blows out when I put this here. Oh, I'll hold it back, it's a little bit better. So yeah, I haven't pulled this out in a little while um, for no real reason. I guess I kind of want the Halloween squirrel done before Halloween so I can put that up for a day or two, I guess. Um, where this isn't as high priority because it's fall right now. So I'm stitching this on a 28 count black Lugana with all of the call for colors. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this episode. Um, thank you so much for coming and joining me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button so you get notifications when I upload new videos. Thanks so much for coming and spending time with me, and I hope I'll see you again in two weeks for the next episode. Thanks again. Take care. Hello. Say hello. <gasps> Look how cute you are. Huh? No, don't eat the carpet. That's not so cute. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Come here. Come here, Leia. Come on. Come to mom. No. I'm just going to be difficult because I want a nice video of you. Mm -hmm. Peek yawn. <laughs>